Hello, vinyl community. Video number two after doing the Vinyl Tag 2023 on my first video. Um, one of the things I wanted to explore on my channel are I'm looking at doing some videos, which I would call uh, mood videos. And these will be thematic, um, sort of a thematic look at, or, or a look at albums that fall into, for me, a thematic kind of uh, mood. So some possibilities might be sad, some might be beautiful. I think sad and beautiful often go together really well. Um, just a quick anecdote, I have made mixtapes all of my life and given them to friends. And one time a, a woman that I gave one of my mixtapes to said, uh, your music is always so depressing. <laughs> I'm like, I prefer to think of it as a uh, deep emotional connection and sad, but she has a point, you know? When is Leonard Cohen just sad and depressing or is he deep emotional, um, yeah, just kind of pl plowing the depths of, of, of emotional, um, uh, I guess, meaning. So today I'm gonna start with a uh, one which I'm gonna call rainy day music. So I live in the Pacific Northwest. It's uh, when you look at the weather forecast, it uh, tends to show the eight week forecast coming up, um, eight days of rain. <laughs> so I uh, gotta be prepared with the music to really support that. So here are three albums that I would consider to be great rainy day music, AKA maybe Sunday morning music. I guess for me, the mindset can often be the same. And uh, here we go. So first one is uh, something that came out, I think it was two years ago, Devendra Banhart, Noah Georgeson. Uh, Devendra Banhart is known in the freak folk scene, I guess, Cripple Crow. I think Noah Georgeson was the producer of that record or co-producer of that record. Um, and I stumbled upon this through the algorithms. They had, uh, I was listening to some ambient stuff and it came up and I'm like, Devendra Banhart. So that, that Cripple Crow record was amazing. Um, so many great songs, beautiful singer songwriter. Um, later he had, um, I guess the name of the album was like Smokey Rolls Down Thunder Canyon or something and had that incredible song, Carmen Sita with uh, Natalie Portman, I guess in the video, but just a, an awesome kind of like dance, Latin rhythmic kind of thing. Um, so clearly Devendra Banhart's got a lot of um, different sides to him. Um, he also most recently recorded a, uh, an incredible version of the Grateful Dead's Franklin's Tower and uh, really slow and really lovely and beautiful. You can check that out, um, I guess on the streaming services. But back to this record. So very ambient. Um, apparently the album was, they, they said it was a conversation, I guess maybe during the pandemic, but a conversation between these two artists and friends, Devendra Banhart and Noah Georgeson. And the idea was that they were inspired by their parents' new age music, I guess of the 70s or maybe 80s. And um, yeah, to create some ambience. So this is, I often refer to albums that are of a, of, a, of a consistent sound throughout, which sometimes I'm in the mood for that. I wanna be able to create the mood or feel the mood and not uh, be jolted out of that. And this album is definitely that for me. So it's called Refuge, Devendra Banhart, Noah Georgeson, two discs. Um, just a great record and a great thing to put on first thing in the morning and, a, and or a uh, rainy day like today. <clears throat> Number two, Pole and their newest one, uh, Tempest. Um, I, I remember listening to and uh, knowing a little bit about Pole in the past. And uh, this one was walking into a record store a few weeks ago here in Vancouver. And this was playing and I'm like, oh my God, what the heck is this? Uh, kind of drony uh, in a really um, atmospheric way. Um, wonderful bass tones. Oh my God, there's just these waves of bass that come over you. Um, and this incredible crackling snare drum. Um, I don't know that I've ever heard a snare drum, partly because of the minimalist nature of, of the album, but it's, it's both uh, crisp and clear and almost jolting. So against what I said earlier, but at the same time, 
it is um, so um, I don't know magical and and um, and great. And the more I listen to it, the more I just keep waiting for those snare drum sounds to kind of come in. They're just incredible. Production on this is amazing. Um, I played this around the house and the bass just feeds through the house and my wife came down and said, what is that? Um, she wasn't pleased. Um, I think because it's just throbbing. She thought that there was something that was not right with the house, which some of us might feel is not a bad thing in terms of creating that atmosphere. Anyways, a wonderful rainy day record, lots of space, lots of mood, lots of tone, fantastic record. And the third one, so I'm trying to jump into three different genres. What I consider to be, you know, the class, well, like maybe the best Bill Evans record. Um, many people know of this. This was, had a huge influence in terms of me getting into jazz. Um, I think like a lot of people, my early days with jazz, uh, was the accessible Miles Davis and John Coltrane. And then as I um, tried other things and I would listen to, let's say, a bit of Ornette Coleman, I would get scared. <laughs> just be like, oh my God, this is like so out there and just lots of honking. And obviously that requires um, more sophistication in terms of being able to appreciate that. This is not that. This is the most beautiful, warm um, record uh, incredible, recorded live at the Village Vanguard. Um, there's a second recording from, I believe, the same night at the Village Vanguard, which is, uh, I believe, Waltz for Debbie. And famously, uh, this trio with Scott LaFaro on bass, and bass does play a really important role in this, like a warm blanket. It's just so wonderful. And uh, some of the classics, you know, My Man's Gone Now, Gloria's Steps, uh, or Gloria's Step, um, all of you. The whole record is just outstanding. This one, double 45, um, as part of the Riverside box set that I treated myself to. Merry Christmas to me. I've been a good boy. Um, and uh, so nice to get this on such a good pressing. But ult ultimately, you don't need the Riverside um, reissues on two time 45. Uh, it is such a good record. Anyways, Another one that I could start my day off or sit down in my uh, comfy chair in front of the stereo, the two speakers pointing at my head like a Max L ad, and gives me so much pleasure over and over and over again. Bill Evans, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. That's it for this time. See you again soon. Bye.